Um, good day. Welcome to economics class. Today we're going to be looking at um, this topic, production. Production is one of the major economic activities, just like we have explained before in the previous class, that one of the economic activities is production, which has to do with creation of utility. What we're saying here is that production is the major aspect of economics that produce or that creates what actually satisfy human being or human wants. But in economics, or to expatiate more, we can further define production as the economic activities that involve the transformation of raw materials or what we refer to as a semi-finished goods into finished goods in order to satisfy human wants. But the major reason for production, just like I said before, is creation of utility. That is, production has to do with transforming raw materials into something that will satisfy um, human wants. <clears throat> there cannot be consumption without production. So definitely, production is very, very essential. But to produce, it is very important to bring together the resources that we need to produce. And what are these resources? We call them factors of production. For the sake of this class, Factors of production is discussed under four headings. For the sake of this class, the first one is referred to as land. Number two, we have labor. Number three, we have uh, capital. And number four, we have uh, entrepreneur. These are four factors of production that we discuss as a, that we discuss in economics. And when we talk about <coughs> factors of production, they are what refers to as a component. Component combined combined for production of goods and services. So, they are components that we bring together in order for production to take place. The first one here, land. When we talk about land in economics, land in economics actually goes beyond the uppermost layer of the earth surface, you know, that we know as a layman. Land in economics consists not only the uppermost layer of the earth's surface, but also all other natural resources that are either <coughs> in the land, in the sea, in the mountain, in the hill, in the forest. All these natural resources are what we regard as a land in economics. Talking about land, we talk about natural resources. Not only the uppermost layer of the earth surface, as layman we actually define it. We said land is the uppermost layer of the earth surface, which includes all the resources in the land in the sea, in the mountain, in the forest, and so on and so forth. That is what we call or we refer to as land in economics. For us to understand land better, or for the sake of our future application, we are going to look at some basic features of land. Sometimes, for the sake of exam, it can also be referred to as characteristics. 
Sometimes they might say the <coughs> attributes. Sometimes they might say the qualities. So, when we say features or characteristics or attributes of land in economics, the first one, for the sake of this class, we said land is immobile. Land is immobile. What we mean by this is that land cannot be physically moved from one position to another position. When we say land, it, can, it, can, it cannot shift from one place to another. That is what we mean by land is immobile. The second basic feature of land is that land is fixed. <coughs> land is fixed in supply. What we're saying is that land is natural in the sense that it cannot be created. It is beyond the creation of human being. Since it is natural, it is not man-made. So it is not what we can increase artificially or what we can decide to reduce artificially. So that's why we say that land is fixed in supply. So no human being can produce land because land has been produced and it is fixed naturally. Another thing that is mostly peculiar with uh, land, it says that it is a free gift of nature. Free gift of nature. That is, land is not created by man. It's not produced by man. It is something that we have naturally. And it is not possible for someone to say, I want to create any natural resources. Rather, we only get these natural resources, you know, for us to now produce what we want. Another feature of land is what we refer to as subjected. We said it is subjected to diminishing return. Land is subjected to diminishing return. What we mean by this is that it is true that land can neither be expanded or contrast. But the thing is that the natural resources in land diminishes. As we use or as uh, uh, we use land, for example, if we cultivate or let's say we are using a piece of land to, to farm, the more we farm or the more we cultivate on this land, then the more or the, the lesser the fertility in that land reduces. So it's like we are mining. When you mine in a particular, in a particular land, as you are mining, then these natural resources reduces, it diminishes. Although the physical land may not reduce in size, may still remain, you know, uh, 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 the same. But the resources in that land diminishes, it reduces. That is what we mean by subjected to diminishing return. So as we use more, we use land often, definitely the resources there will diminish. So these, among the others, <coughs> are the features of what you refer to as a land. Now, having discussed this, let's now look at some of the importance of land in economics. <coughs> 